Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. And it's Sunday, April 30th, 2023. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to the Cubs Outlaw, the Bear Podcast, the Vendor Terminal Linked, episode number 693. And it's that time of the month again. No, not that type of mo- end of month. It is this time of the end of the month. Uh, there's been a lot, of, a lot of rain this month. Yeah? Yeah. A lot of rain. Mm-hmm. A little bit of hail, but very minor. And we got desktops. What? And our, our our team finally got our desktops after being returned to office for uh a little over a year. Oh, I mean the okay the 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 group that needed it most got it first. Well, six months ago. <laughs> and now we're finally getting them, but they've only given us one monitor. I think they're going to see about getting us a second one because we really could use two monitors and be, make our workflow more efficient. Mm-hmm. They haven't taken away everybody's laptops yet, except all of the people who have training laptops from while they were in training have to give them back training. So uh, they're sad. Well, actually, one of them said the other one is currently wasn't was out when we got our desktop. So. When he comes back, I get to say, hey, you know your computer? Yeah, I need it back. And he will be sad. Womp womp. So we'll see what happens. That's it. I had a very boring month. Nobody Damon. said April was the most stimulating time of year, necessarily. That's true. Well, I'm also not the most entirely. <laughs> also been my company got me into Baldur's Gate 3, so I picked up that as well. Uh, ah. We also got our, what normally would have been the end of May, we got this, this past week was actually a, uh, we got our yearly raise our back pay, and our bonus. Ooh. Because, but the back pay was smaller because it only went up to the beginning of the month because usually we get, usually, or the last, the original trend was we would get the the bonus, bonus rate, annual bonus raise at the end of May and be retroactive to April 1st, but they pushed them out at the end of April, so they have less of a month, but otherwise. Mm, yay. Yeah, it actually was like I got double paid. It was like, Money. you know. I'm thinking that makes for a happy bank account. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping for one of those in the coming months. Mm-hmm. Because... Uh, we're going through contract negotiations. And oh. so one of the, the things that is being planned on and, and is probable is back pay to the beginning of the year to match retro uh, what our new rate is. 
Mm. So at the rate things are going, it'll probably be a half year. <laughs> so well, that'll I'm be like fun. just kind of put that in the savings account. Yes. <laughs> probably a good idea. Damon? Um, yeah, so... Wait, funny. let me guess. Let me guess. Uh, Swabby says... <laughs> I'm just teasing. Yeah, so... Still trucking along with the wedding. Um, that's been kind of the main thing this month. Pretty sure, maybe the whole month, if not. <laughs> into March like Gosh, daily kind of, yeah kind of um, so slowly been doing stuff we had what's that I feel like that was in March this is me like going through and thinking about stuff and being like no that wasn't this month as well we didn't do all of this this month did we Yep, sure did. Fuck yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> it's look at my it's been a long month. Yeah, it's so weird. Anyway, um, so we had, um, like, almost two weeks ago, we had our food tasting. Um, so the place we're doing the wedding at, they kind of, it's all inclusive. So you get uh, a reception with buffet and, and um, for us, as we're, you know, the package we get received, they're gonna, there's going to be a cash bar. Or not cash bar, um, open bar. Why is so hard? But anyway, um, so they they do quarterly for anyone that has a wedding for them. They do a um, essentially um, a tasting. Um, you can't taste everything because they can't make everything on their menus. But they give you a nice smattering of all of the of a lot of the items that they have prepared um, on their menus. And you just go and you kind of taste it all. You eat it all, and, you know, make ideas. And it gives you an idea of what you're going to, you know, have. Um, so we did that. And that was, I mean, it was a great time. It's, it was a lot of food, a lot of food. Um, uh, it was, and it was a lot of people. That's what I wasn't expecting. There was a room, a big ass room full of people just everywhere and so so it wasn't just you and jim for your wedding right this was, they were doing they were killing that's a horrible reference anyway <laughs> they were they were they were knocking a lot out with one mm -hmm. thing. yeah okay so like anyone that has a wedding in the next like quarter essentially are some that like our um the people who are sitting with us their wedding wasn't until september um as an example ours is in june so they may have another one but the idea is that you go and you taste all the food and you can look at they give you like a packet with all the um menu items that they have they have give you a list of what you actually had that day you can kind of decide what you're going to have and depending on again um the wedding that you're doing you determines what you get food wise so um again um and people brought like families. It was it was it was a lot of people. And you had to like you and your your you know significant other is two. Like obviously you and the the groom or bride get to go. Um but you know, it was maybe I think five, ten dollars a person um extra. And this wasn't again, this wasn't like um I don't think this is the full like you get a full serving of everything. You're just like, it's cut down for obviously for purposes of um, the number, because of samples, sampling. Right. Um, and we then scheduled a meeting because the wedding coordinator was there. We scheduled a meeting with her, which we had on Saturday, this past Saturday, to get down to the like nitty gritty of what the wedding will be about. So that was exciting. Um, you know, she was asking, she asked a lot of questions and we were able to answer, um, but like planning basically the timeline of timeline of the evening or afternoon, because it's a Sunday afternoon and, um, you know, getting, you know, connections with people that we might need. Um, that was a lot of fun. It was it was a great um, weekend, great time. And we're 
you know, counting down the days. The wedding's in June. Um, so um, RSVPs haven't been as, like, immediate, but I think we were expecting that. Um, you know, people might wait until the last minute. A lot of people are here local, so they just haven't responded. It's more, you know, making sure that other people know. Um, we need to we need to get a final number to the um, place by June first, which is about uh, two weeks before the wedding. So it's been a little crazy, and it's been exciting, but it's been a lot, and just kind of going through it. So yay, wedding! Um, yay. On the other side of that, um, as if to add another wonderful expense, I think I talked about last month, we were dealing with um, the roof on the house. Um, we finally got the contractor over to look at it and um, they're gonna give us, you're, you know, gonna do the whole thing and it's not gonna be a cheap moment, but it's going to be a really well done, well ma- well maintained and a company that is long serving in the city, in the city and does really good work. So we're kind of paying for that quality. Um, but I'm waiting to hear back from them to get that scheduled, obviously trying to schedule it, you know, if we can get it in May, that'd be perfect. Um, but if we have to wait until June, we might want to push it back a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's me right now. Yay. Just think before you know it, you'll be celebrating a fifth year anniversary. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Five year goes along with the 20 year. So. It's it. So our our wedding is on the 11th. Our anniversary is on the 13th. So we're just pushing it together. So um, two birds, one stone. Yeah. And this year in particular, the reason why we wanted to have the wedding is because this year will technically be Gemini's 20th anniversary of being together. Yeah. Yay. Just think in 2024, if you'd had a child, they could drink. <laughs> that baby don't live. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Gary, what about you? Um, car stuff continues. So back at the end of January, beginning of February, um was had an issue had to have the car looked at and fixed so we did that and then at the beginning of the month i had to schedule to get a belt replaced because it was squawking and was making me like nervous and annoyed like because if it busted while i was driving like it's very bad yeah. very bad mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um so they put a new belt on only i've noticed that that new belt is squeaky in a different way not all the time, but like, <laughs> so I'm just like, there's a part of me that's like, baby, do you need lube? Like, like what, what's going on here? Things too tight? I don't understand. Um, <laughs> so I got to, I got to take her in probably this month uh, for an oil change. So I'm going to tell them and be like, can y'all check what you did? <laughs> but then uh, a week ago, this past week. Uh, yeah, just this past Monday, uh, I was doing uh, driving for work across the county to do. Um, so I coordinate a condom distribution program for condoms to be available in the community at various sites. And one of them uh, is uh, out in a more rural area, which is fine. Like it ain't just city folk that needs to wrap it. Um, so I went out there to do a replenishment swap out and give them some extra supply backup. And on the way back, driving across the highway, I heard this uh, noise, something hit the windshield. And for those that drive on highways, like, I don't want to say it's a frequent occurrence, but you hear things. Um, 
And so I'm kind of like looking around because I was like, damn, like something hit the windshield. And like I looked and I looked and I looked and I didn't see anything. And I was like, okay. So I get back to work and I wrap up and then I come home and I work my other job. And next morning I go out to the car and that's when I was like, son of a bitch. And it isn't a chip. There's a crack. Oh, no. And so it's coming down from the top and it's like making snaking slowly its way. Um, and I realized that most likely I couldn't see it at the beginning and it might have been at the top of the windshield. And that's why I didn't notice it. And then over the course of the day, like when I went out after work that day to drive back home, I noticed it had like extended itself. So oh, that God. happened for like two or three days in a row. And it's like kind of changing its direction. And it's occurring to me that it's the heat and the cold of like the sun in the day mm-hmm, and the cool mm-hmm. at night. Cause this past week it got down to almost freezing. <sighs> So I reached out to a very popular nationally known brand that I'm not going to name (laughs) that is infamously, you know, got a jingle for (laughs) like doing repairs and replacements of your windshield. Um, And I went through their website and service uh, and um, then I logged into my car insurance to find out what my deductible was, which was, was, was fine. Um, and then scheduled an appointment, but they said they needed five feet of clearance room pretty much on all sides. And that made me realize that work is not the ideal place for that because our parking lot is packed um, full of vehicles. And even if I backed in, like there's always people coming and going, there's deliveries. And I was like, okay, that's not going to work. Mm. So I'm going to have to schedule that like somehow with home. And then the beginning, as we've discussed on the pre-show, the beginning of the rain, um, you know, it's a Eurythmics cycle on repeat because here comes the rain again uh so i realized because i don't have a carport or a garage or whatever (laughs) yes damon (laughs) (laughs) um the uh so i was like okay i can't have it done outside with the rain like and you know it it needs to sit in the gasket like adhesive needs to sometimes to settle and dry and anyways so yeah i had to have that done like midweek oh gross and then Within 24 hours of the new windshield being in place, like I have a tree near the driveway that is budding. And let me tell you, there are some some well-fed birds (laughs) that are just having a healthy time, apparently. I was like, are you effing kidding me? was like i haven't even had the car a full day with the new windshield because then the next because anyways i came home on the one lunch and then the next day um went to drive the car and two big old spots and i was like oh for real anyways wow but i you know and and there's a part of me that's like i've been i've known that i need to probably get a new car she's turning 13 this year but car prices be expensive right now, y'all, like it, even used vehicles. And so that's why I'm like, I guess I'm just going to keep, you know, investing in her and paying and stuff. Mm. So. So I just feel like this month was kind of <laughs> focused around that. Um, we restarted clinic at work. Uh, that's been interesting as a journey. Um Thank you, pandemic and staff changeover and things of that nature. Uh, my work wife is back from their medical leave. Mm-hmm. So that's nice. Um, yeah. So it's just been a whole series of things. But um, I'm now working five nights a week at my second job. Oh, that's so right. Monday through Friday is pretty much uh, getting ready for working, um, coming home and or wrapping up from about seven in the morning till 830 at night. Mm. So, hence I'm kind of behind on some things, sort of, because I haven't had time, and then I get to the weekend, and every weekend I pretty much have, like, one thing sort of planned, like, I've got uh, pride meetings and other stuff going on, and Mm. so, you know, I feel like I'm dropping the ball on a couple of things, which is not intentional, but doing what I can. So, Yeah. yeah. Busy, busy, busy month. You know, sometimes it's good to be busy. It makes time go by faster. Sometimes it's not mm-hmm. great to be busy because it makes time to go by faster. In the meantime, 
Miss Janet? Gary, what's been going on over in the Twitterverse? Uh, we got a couple new followers over in uh, Tweeterland. Um, we would like to thank the following individuals for following us. Y'all must be some perverts, and we love it. Uh, <laughs> we want to thank at justice underscore TE69283, at Abram Gamas, Abram Gamas, 18, and at Paul Lat69384977. I hope that isn't a social security number. Anyways. No, it's, it's too short. I know. <laughs> but it's, these randomized numbers that Twitter sometimes gets on accounts, man. I'm just like, okay, that's the thing. Anyways, uh, nothing in the YouTube area that I, that I was able to spot. So Damon gets to skip out this one. <laughs> and uh, Jeff, how about uh, the, 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 the old timers Facebook <laughs> arena? Well, we got some new followers. Uh, we come from uh, Susan Hall, uh, Kevin Nistrup, Pierre Lawson, Stephen Horschler, Horsch, Horschler, William Williams, Tom, Kevin, Allen, Devery, Kui, 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 Ahmad, Hamad, uh, Jeffrey Johnson, who spells his name correctly. Some Thai word I can't pronounce, which, uh, according to Google Translate, uh, goes by Haiti Friendship. Phil Askin Pure Bottom. He might be a pure bottom. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Frank R. Cisneros. Carlos Ilan Ben Gordian Gonzalez. And uh <laughs> Con wow. Congrats yeah, on congrats that's it, that's it. on <laughs> congrats on getting through the whole thing in character because I can't I can't sustain that way. I was like, nice, nice. Bravo. The, the reason I made that joke is because apparently TikTok is for the youngsters and Facebook is for the old people and Twitter is kind of for old but not quite as old. That's that's my impression recently. So who needs to watch six second videos? Give me something with more substance. <laughs> Anyways, I think six second video from spying. No, it's May also I recommend stockydudes.com. Anyways, <laughs> I have a subscription to that. <laughs> Anyways, I will say their latest video release. I was like, oh, oh, okay. Well, well. They're, 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 <laughs> their most recent stuff, uh, the past couple of videos. I'm like, all right. Shout out to Brandon, the producer, creator over there. Anyways. <laughs> Gary, what's been going over on the patrons? Uh, so over on uh, Patreon, we want to give some big bear cub hugs to our patrons as recognition for their support because everybody loves a supporter. Uh, at the Cubster level, we have Charles W. Daniel C. and Michael K. Our U Bears, David. Dave T, Lee, Michael Q, and Tim S, and our buddies Lloyd G and Michael V. Um, so the end of the year came around um, for March. We completed five years. And uh, if you were in the pre-show, you probably heard that I'm working on the message that's going out with our new uh, Zazzle designs that just hit recently. Because if you are... Um, a subscriber slash supporter of Patreon at the Uber or the Cupster level, you get a t-shirt once a year. And so um, they're going to be picking the design that they want. Um, and it doesn't even have to be one of the new five designs. It could be a preview design. I know. It's so exciting. Um, and we did collaborate with Smashy the Bear. 
um, who's part of our Seattle entourage and has been for many years. And we're greatly appreciative of Smashy's artistic talents for helping us and create some of the designs. Um, a couple of the new designs, for some reason, in fits of fashion are behind Zazzle's wall, meaning you have to have an account and logged in to be able to see them. I guess they're a little too spicy. I don't know. Uh, also, it's a way to make sure that some of them got through their filters so that we could actually post them. Ah, yeah. that's fair. So, yeah. Um, but we're kind of excited because normally we roll out like one shirt design a year. But this year, because it was the five year anniversary, we did five designs. So, um, yes. Uh, one of them I happen to be wearing currently. So that's right. We made our 10th anniversary next generation inspired shirt design available to the public it was a patreon exclusive last year so um yeah 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 so that's one of those things no uh patreon anniversaries this month but that's okay um and we're gonna have more news on patreon coming uh probably at the recap for may maybe or uh, sometime soon they notified us um that they're changing the rewards goal program apparently they're doing away with goals and they're going to come up with some other stuff um so we'll we'll catch you up on all that as it happens mm -hmm. but your financial support is much appreciated uh, as jeff is about to pay the bill for another uh, couple years of hosting domain all that jazz yes so yeah yep. thank you yep. for support patreons patreon patrons, patrons. On patrons on Patreon. Correct. <laughs> the platform has an E, but then <laughs> does it if you're a person. And and just to also say, if you like the flexibility for accessibility design, uh, we do have a yoga mat if you're into that. Or just want a yoga mat. Our, you know, it could be a yoga mat. It could be a place mat, like a play mat. I mean, it's small, but, you know. If you're flexible, it works. <laughs> That's so true. Mm -hmm. Speaking of being flexible. Oh, sorry. Oh, wait. Was... No, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> so, Gary, tell us about our month while I uh, do some shopping. Ooh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's been a doozy of a month. Uh, no, it's been a good month. Uh, we had our What's Going On for the Month of March back in episode COL 689. 690, uh, let's talk about sex. It may seem that in 2023 we have a theme. <laughs> and that's not necessarily the plan, but uh, we did a Let's Talk About Sex now that we're older. And we discussed um, just about the physicality of the activity and the limitations. And uh, also importantly, things to pay attention to that you might not have thought about before. Like uh, if you've changed your um, diet, if you have, um, you know, have to take prescriptions for certain things, like you, you should pay attention to that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, and then uh, episode 691, we returned to Let's Talk About Food. And we talked about cravings, the things that pop up for us that we're like, you know. Oh, I could go for that. Like today, before the show, I suddenly wanted ice cream. So I went and got a milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those constant cravings. Nice. And uh, then last week, uh, see, well, episode 692, we welcome back Dr. Edward Angelini Cook, our resident sex therapist, to talk about sexual scripts. As a part mm -hmm. of our landscape of relationship series, uh, and it was a good one. I think it, we learned some things regarding uh, that we have scripts that are given to us without even realizing that's what's happening. Um, mm. That their society, our community, our tribes, like all these different things, kind of like uh, whether they're good intentioned or not, they give us guidelines. And sometimes, like, that can conflict with our um, desires or what we, you know, are doing or feel that we should be doing. So, yeah, it's a good one to check out. Hmm. And with hmm. that, hmm. it's time for this. 
All right, enough of that. And I, I, this isn't the title of the tweet, but uh, oh, I, it's more of a commentary. I called it "nice view." Mm-hmm. And the view is of uh, five bears with bellies uh, standing around with different states of flaccidity. Hardness? I don't know. Erectile? Uh, Excitement? Just like nice little belly to belly sort of situation all facing in. And the cameras from a direct down or view up. It's looking up. In between this uh, five some. It's like a kaleidoscope of uh, beards, bellies, and balls. Yeah. <laughs> kaleidoscope of cock. This is from Gruff as a Bear, aka at Gruff underscore as underscore a underscore bear. Mm-hmm. And he says, first rooster rock day of the season. I just think it's a nice view. If I recall correctly, yeah, Rooster Rock is a uh, beach location. I think it's on the West Coast. So this is a few folks that got together um, and had a nice uh, no-clothes outing. Had a nice time. Yes. Bear Hunter, Bear underscore or underscore Hunter said, said, one for all and all for one. Yeah, I think this is over in Oregon, but it doesn't matter where it is. It's just a pleasant view. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everybody's putting their swords together. That's fine. <laughs> Damon? I have two. Um, speaking of swords and cosplay, uh, I have a... The first one I titled Nightwing Cosplay, um, but it is from um, at, I'm saying, I think it's Draxon A, Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's um, just a, a nice, you know, bearded, somewhat bellied, like more muscly probably, but um in a really fun looking nightwing costume um i just really like the look of this um costume so he mm. wow yeah so um it says sweet but I'm, i think he meant suit by at unmasked studio photography by um at eagle rockets slash um at nico the wafer could not be more proud of my almost decade of cosplaying as Grayson. He's my hero of choice and a damn fine man in blue. Um, for those, Nightwing is Dick Grayson, the former Robin, now Nightwing in the DC comic universe. Um, and this is just a really great like set of pictures and um, really good. It looked The suit looks really good. The pictures look really good. The guy looks really good. It's all, yeah, it's all Uh, just fun times. What I'm really impressed by is the craftsmanship of this suit. Mm -hmm. Um, There's some, I think there's some padding built in very strategically in certain areas to give like some musculature, which I'm not complaining about um, by any means, but the, like the pattern cut, just, I just really, really love like, the craftsmanship that's put it been put into it um yeah it's it's very well done and of course the photography looks amazing um yeah so that's my first one um and i really like i said i really did enjoy that and then my second i titled play date um and it's a video um from um at blanco rogan six nine and it says, deep peak of my play date with at Gaz Barrington today. And then there's a the devil face emoji, a eggplant emoji, and a peach emoji. And I'm assuming Gaz, if Gaz Barrington is the wonderful looking bottom in this um, 
video and I just thought it was it, it was kind of sexy. Hmm. Very. I'm trying to <laughs> there's a part I think they're I think they're on a bed. It looks like they're in a bedroom, so yeah. Um I think he's on like a bench. Maybe a bench. Yeah, that's what I was trying to figure out. Kind of like an upholstered bench that goes at the end of a bed. I don't want to mm. say a padded bench because it's not like, you know, one that you would have in a play space. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I will say this. There is something for some of us alluring about seeing body movement. Mm-hmm. Um, like, because... Energy is kinetic and creates waves. I guess that's just as far mm-hmm. as I'm going to phrase that. Anyways, <laughs> go check it out. You'll you'll see what it is. I love Gaz's face. Yeah, you can really tell he's enjoying it. Yes. Oh, yeah. Gary. Um. So my I titled it "Feeling Apprehension." Because that's the first part of the caption. It says, feeling apprehension. I can't decide if it's a good photo because it's succeeding at doing what I want. Or I just think the model is nice to look at. Both can be true. Sure. Maybe I feel it's borderline just spank material and that devalues the image somehow. And this is by at men underscore of underscore size. Um, Their profile is titled men don't have big tits. And then in parentheses it says they do. And the model is at ginger bear bulk. Um, but I love this, like, what kind of feels like impromptu photo shot because the model is standing on a bed. And so, like, you know, when, when like the bed may have been made, but like because you're standing on it, like the sheets are kind of like ruffled up a little bit and there's like two sets of pillows and whatever. But he's just standing there naked kind of in this like. Um, sculptural pose, I guess, is the best way to phrase it. Like when you think of like Michelangelo's David or like, the, mm-hmm. you know, the, like kind of Greek Roman statuary type stuff. That's sort of what this evokes a little bit. Um, and he is the way he came into the world, baby, uh, <laughs> and very furry, has, uh, you know, part of that PBS, I call it perfect bear syndrome, you know, beard thing where it's like, um, you know, very full and thick, but it's reddish. Uh, he's a brunette and he just looks great. Um, and I really appreciated the fact that like they were saying, like, I really like this picture. And yet I feel like it it does several things at once. You know, it's mm-hmm. like evocative of art. It is stylistic. Um, and yet at the same time, there's probably a bunch of people that are like, <laughs> you know, because uh, <laughs> they just think it's hot, um, you know, and are probably enjoying themselves. To looking at it but yeah. uh yeah 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 i um i just and and he looks familiar ginger bear bulk i'm not quite sure why uh it says he's in chicago i'm feeling like maybe i've seen him around or i know him from somewhere but i don't think i know him personally maybe it's just you know circles of influence or, or something along those lines <laughs> but i just thought it was a really great picture um, so yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. Maybe not. It is a good picture. Like I'm, I'm, I'm loving like the very hairy belly in this moment. And yeah. kind of, the, it's kind of, it looks very posed, but not posed. That's so, that's the part that's kind of like getting me. Well, and I feel like one of the interesting things about this picture <laughs> is that um, if you've ever tried to stand on a bed, like fully stand upright on a bed, it is not exactly the easiest thing in the world. It no. takes a balance uh, and like especially if you have a soft top, uh, no pun intended, um, kind of <laughs> bed like because you're standing upright, like your feet and everything just sink into it. Um, right. So you don't really have a uh, good uh, like s- like support in terms of like, you know, the rigidness of what you're standing on to hold you. So I feel in a way like there's a bit of a like a, a teetering kind of thing 
um, until you get to a moment where you can kind of hold still, but you're not going to be able to do that forever. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You're probably going to hold that, put, you have that like two seconds to take that picture. And then... Right, 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 right. I, I imagine there was like kind of a conversation. It was like, <laughs> like, like just hold the button down and let the shutter go like, ch -ch 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 -ch, like it takes yeah. as many pictures as possible. Hopefully one of them will be like, you know, the, the best part. Um, so yeah. And then there's another one. Uh, I, I don't have the link, but if you go to ginger bear bulks, um, there is one that he had that, uh, that he credited to them where he's, um, in a slightly different pose, but it's the exact same shot or whatever. So yeah, but mm. I just really liked it. I, I, it, it's part of that whole, um, for me, body positivity thing that I've talked about before, where I was like, if I'd seen this when I was younger and had this available to me, I probably wouldn't have developed, you know, dysmorphia issues and other things because I felt like, you know, I was fat and like nobody appreciated it or liked it or whatever. So, mm. yeah. Yeah. Yes. Indeed. All right, moving on into the links. I'm linking uh, because just today I launched an episode of a show called The Shuttlebug Pod Show. Any of you guys remember the show Enterprise? Which for the first couple of seasons it was just titled Enterprise, but then at later seasons they added Star Trek to the title. Because mm -hmm. it was always a Star Trek show. Um... Sorry, Scott Bakula. Yes, I'm. I'm aware. I know who you're talking Hunter about. Hunter Trenier. Yeah. Dominic Keaton. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Well, Trip Tucker and Malcolm Reed had an episode mm -hmm. called Shuttle Pod One, where they were stuck on a shuttle pod, and they thought the Enterprise was destroyed, and they were trying to figure out how to get home. Hence why this is called The Shutterpod Show. Mm -hmm. Which is hosted by Connor Trenier, who played Trip Tucker, and Dominic Keating, who played Malcolm Reed from the show. And they've been doing this for a while. And just this last episode, they had Jonathan Frakes on. They have had some killer guests. Mm. Um, they've been bringing in basically the next-gen cast because of Picard Season 3 is the continuation slash conclusion of the next generation uh, characters as main storyline type stuff that the fans have been really wanting for decades. They've got, they've had some great people on just uh, hearing some of the stories and they've even interviewed viewed each other. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a great little talk show. Actually, when I add another one at the beginning of this. Yeah, I, what I really like um, is because everyone on it, um, well, I shouldn't say everyone, the main individuals that are the, that are the hosts, because um, they have some other co-hosts who are not necessarily uh, actors from the show, but pretty primarily everyone has been an actor on the show um involved in the production so like they're all part of the star trek universe what i really love about it is like there's a familiarity so when they talk to each other and have conversations it's not your classic kind of like um media day blitz conversations like you know which is an endless carousel of like you know the same you know kind of questions mm -hmm. they really get into some things about like what it was like to portray that to have this happen and they might even get into like some of the stuff that happened about contract negotiations or just like production and hollywood and scripting and, and all sorts of stuff so i really appreciate that and, uh, and notably a lot of these people are, are removed by years so they can reflect on it um and talk about it in ways without it being like uh I don't know, like where, where they might be concerned about certain aspects of, you know, what gets said and how people see that and all that kind of jazz. And it's not just actors. It is also uh, people of the, from production teams, mm -hmm. producers, showrunners, that sort of thing. So it's really interesting to get the insight on it. And they do such a good job. Um, speaking of interview shows but not quite this a little bit differently 
Anybody remember the show called Smallville? I believe mm-hmm. I recommended uh, Talkville a month or two ago, uh, which is Michael Rose's mom and th- um, Welling's show rewatch podcast of, of Smallville. Well, I ha- I don't think I've recommended Michael Rosenbaum's own like individual podcast called Inside of You, where he interviews celebrities of all types types as well. He's had Jonathan Frakes. He's had Will Wheaton. That was a really good interview. And it's more. therapeutical you might say he keeps saying this is like therapy for both of us and he's just such a good interviewer uh so lex luther is interviewing people and it's so good so good i just i've actually subscribed to the audio version of the podcast and been binging my way through through that uh during breaks and such during work Mm. um and it's just so good so so good so i recommend those two shows both of them i believe both have audio podcasts as well as video i'm like in the youtube channels but neat check those out gary um just one uh, thing this month is a is a link for a, kind of a pick. Um, I just watched it yesterday, actually, because I think it came out this past week on Disney Plus. If you have a subscription, they have done a live action reinterpretation of the Peter Pan story. This time it's called Peter Pan and Wendy uh, for a very specific reason. Um, and I was a little confused at first because I thought they were like. I thought they were explaining the backstory of these characters Mm. and I wasn't wrong, but it doesn't, it didn't go in the direction I thought it would. Like I thought it was going to be chronological and it would start at the very beginning before we know them to be who they are. And instead it, it it kind of reveals that in in a different way. So, um, but I, I really liked it. Um, I wasn't expecting to hate it or to like it when I went into it. Um, but I, I was like, well, we'll give it a, a shot. Um, Jude Law plays Captain Hook, which is uh, I, right. <laughs> I see David's face like that's an interesting choice. Um, they have uh, Alyssa Wampanakta, I think is how you pronounce her last name. I'm probably getting that wrong. She plays Tiger Lily. Mm. Um, and I thought that was really awesome that they, I I get that a lot of people may feel like, ah, this is being too woke because they legitimately have individuals representing things. And so they have someone who is indigenous representing that character and, Mm. um, some of that culture. So I find that really kind of fascinating in a way. Um, and some of the representation among, amongst the, um, I completely forgot what they're called now. Lost Boys? Uh, yes, amongst the Lost Boys. Um, spoiler alert, there are girls. Um, <laughs> uh, and they quickly address it and move on, which I thought was great. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to spoil too much else. but And it's authentic that they did a lot of stuff of the era when kind of the book was written. And so, like, they're on a real pirate ship, and Captain Hook has a real hook for a hand, not, like, a a fun hook. I don't know how to explain Mm. it. Like, it's a little bit gritty. Like, it's very kind of put in reality um, Mm. in in some aspects and stuff. So, yeah, I I just liked it. I, I, you know, um, it was a little fanciful outing entertainment kind of thing. Yeah, it was uh, it was nice <laughs> to see. And then I, I had to say this because my friend's visiting and we watched it and I was like, well, it's so many levels better than that god awful musical television like live adaptation that they did. Oh, my God. <laughs> the worst 
live musical production in television history. I'm just saying. So <laughs> I don't know about that, but it was pretty fucking bad. Oh no, it's it's the worst by far. The worst. <laughs> Whoever decided that Christopher Walken should be Captain Hook should lose their job, be deported from California, forced to live in in Florida. Like it's just inexcusable. Yo, it was horrendous. Ho, ho. And a no. bottle of rum. No, he didn't even do that. No. <laughs> It was the first piratey thing I could think of, so. I don't think Jeff was that far off, because I'm pretty sure he was goddamn drunk or high when they did the live musical <laughs> on television. But anyways, it was just bad. It was just bad, 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 bad. Anyways. Like, I, and I thought there was, like, there was nothing redeeming about it. I was like, this is, who authorized this? Like, who signed off on this? Like, this is just, ugh, it was cringe. Horrible cringe. And, uh, Peter Pan. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So, yeah, it was. Um, but so I, I guess part of me was like, well, I've, I've seen the toilet dregs of what this, <laughs> of what a production could be like that, that people got paid to do. So I'm hoping this is going to be better. And it was. I, I enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, like it's kind of interesting because there's a part of me that's like, man, I wish I could see more of this. Like there's like I honestly would be okay if they I don't think that's the intention, but I would be okay if they kind of did a sequel or they did just another story in this universe kind of 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 these characters and explain some other things like like before Wendy arrives with her brothers or what happens after the movie. Like it, it like it was just, I, I felt it was good enough in that way. I was like, oh, OK. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways. So consider checking it out. There we go. And with that, that's the end. Oh. Plain ways to contact us. Pop over to our website, comes out loud.com. Shoot us an email. It comes out loud at gmail.com. Shoot us a voicemail at 361 Talk. That's 361-265-8255. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at comes out loud in the appropriate place of the URL. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, uh, also, you can join our Entourage chat on Telegram at bit.ly slash telegram dash col. If you would like to know when we're planning on recording these, she these shows, these shows, uh, you can check it out at bit.ly slash calendar dash col. You get various accoutrements, such as plenty of our designs, which I've currently got in my Zazzle cart. I don't think I've checked out yet. But you can get, like, one of our... Anyways, one of these. <laughs> Handy towel, a mug, whatever. I don't have, I don't have my suit, which is really nice. Uh, you can get that at zazzledazzle.com slash comes out loud. Some of those designs and some of the designs from th this last section of new five stuff uh, were designed by Smashy. You can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. You can also become I, a patron. Oh, oh, you gotta come no, up. I was just going to quickly say, uh, please go check out Smashy's content. Um, if you're into kink, you should be checking out his designs because he's got a whole bunch of things in there. Um, yeah. Yeah. He's got he's got some good stuff like his. His is more provocative than ours is in some ways. So it's it's good. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash comes out loud or send us a donation at people.me slash comes out loud. Please pop over to your local podcasting platform and uh, um, uh, rate us, review us there because that puts us up in the algorithm. You can do that at Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, many other places. You can find me anywhere on the internet as box at box, puppy box, cut box, something or other if I'm even looking at it. Damon. If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at TheaterCup79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. I'm most favorably at sites are on Facebook. You can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is not safe for work. For the safe for work Twitter, try DMA Gamer79. Direct market area gamer. Gary. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere in line as CareBear73. And with that, 
Say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Ciao for now. Bye.